Hello and welcome to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven and this is my 2007 Ford Fusion, my first Copart salvage car rebuild project. It's a beautiful day here in Indiana and I want to go ahead and get some more work done on the car. Now we left off in the last episode getting the engine started and I was even able to take it for a short drive around the block. That was very exciting because that was the first time I'd ever gotten to drive this car. But as we get closer to getting this car back on the road, there's something else important that we need to take care of. Modern cars have computer systems that record crash data as well as monitor airbag and seatbelt health. Even if your airbags don't deploy in an accident, most likely it's going to record that data and you're going to end up with a seat belt warning light in your instrument panel. In addition to airbags, one of the other important safety components of a modern car are seat belt pretensioners. In the event of an accident, a pretensioner cinches down tight on the passenger, which keeps them from moving very far in an accident. What that means though is that the seat belt is dangerous to use, if it's even possible to use it, after an accident. So seat belts need to either be replaced or rebuilt after the accident as well. I'm excited to tell you that this episode of Crossroads Rebuild is sponsored by MyAirbags.com. MyAirbags.com specializes in resetting SRS modules to clear all crash data and rebuilding seat belts after an accident. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to remove the SRS module, how to remove the seat belts, and how to package it up and get it sent off to myairbags.com for them to reset and rebuild. Let's get started. All right, this probably goes without saying, but anytime you're going to work on any electrical component on your car, but especially the airbag system, you want to make sure you unhook the negative terminal on your battery first. I have already unhooked the negative terminal and tucked it back behind the battery and then I placed this rag up here so that the uh, terminal and the uh, negative harness cannot make contact and accidentally re-energize the system. Now that the battery is unhooked and it has been for a little while, I'm going to take you in here and show you how to um, find and unhook the SRS module, the little computer system. In most cars it's going to be somewhere in the center console area and here in the Ford Fusion it's tucked away up here way up underneath uh, the console and kind of over beside the uh, driver's pedals. So what you have to do is, at least in this car, there's a, uh, a pull tab you have to pull out here as well as a screw that holds this panel down. Then there's a plastic tab that holds the carpet up and then once you pull that back you'll have access uh, to the SRS module. You'll need to do the same thing on both sides this SRS module is held in with three bolts. One is right here on this side. I'm not sure if you can see that. And then there are two more on the other side. Uh, in my car, they're eight millimeter, so I will undo mine and then that will free the module. Once you have the bolts out, there are two uh, computer harnesses here that have to be unhooked. So we'll just pull that one down and out and then the pull tab here and that pulls out. And then once the three bolts are out, your SRS module is free. I'm going to go ahead and remove mine and then I'll check back in with you shortly. All right, got the SRS module out. Not too difficult, it's just awkward to get to. You can see you've just got the three bolts, the two harness connections, and then this whole module is free and ready to be sent off to my airbags. Now that we have that out, it's time to get the seat belts out of the car. All right, I got the driver's side seat belt out and I wanted to kind of show you what the assembly looks like out of the car um, and then uh, then I'll show you in the car uh, how everything attaches and how you can take it apart. So this is of course your winding mechanism. This bolts to the uh, adjustable mechanism on the side that lets you set the height and then this uh, mounts down at the floor. That's your uh, final uh, lowest bolt on the uh, bottom of the B pillar. Now, when I got this car, I was expecting the seat belts to be locked because many times in an accident where the airbags blow, the seat belts are locked. Uh, but uh, driver and front passenger seat belts were still usable. Uh, in fact, yesterday when I drove the car for the first time, I even put this seat belt on. This is the driver's seat belt. I even put it on. So uh, I did use this seat belt. But if you listen inside here, 
Can you hear that? There's a little bit of a rattling sound and that is ball bearings. The seat belt has a harness that, that plugs in right there and just like the airbags, in an accident, uh, there's a little charge in here that blows, it throws a bunch of ball bearings in and it locks the winding mechanism which keeps it from allowing you to go any further um, than, than where you are. Um, well, when I pulled this out, I shook it to see if those ball bearings were loose. And when I did that, I'm not sure if I can hold the camera and do this at the same time, the seat belt actually locked. So mine did blow and uh, this seat belt absolutely had to be reset uh, and fixed, rebuilt, even though technically it was usable. So now that I've shown you the seat belt out of the car, I'm gonna go ahead and take you in the car and show you uh, what I went through to get it out. And then I'll go ahead and take the other one out as well. All right, my camera's battery was about dead, so I switched to my phone. Hope this doesn't mess up the uh, quality of the recording. But um, anyway, I wanted to show you what, uh, what it took to actually get uh, the seatbelt out of the car. Um, the main thing is you have to be able to get this panel off. There's a plastic panel, it's actually right there, uh, that has to come off uh, so you can access most of the mounting points there. In order to get that off though, you have to take um, this sill plate off here, which is right there, and then the back seat one, I didn't take it all the way out, but I loosened it up. You need to take that one out as well. That allows you to actually get uh, that center uh, plastic B-pillar uh, cover off. I actually originally thought this had to come off as well, but it actually doesn't. So you can ignore the fact that I took that off and uh, I'll show you how this one works. So you basically got three, um, three bolts to take off, or excuse me, four uh, bolts to take off. The lowest mount is right here. That one's easy. You don't have to take anything off to get to that one. Uh, it takes a Torx T50 uh, bit to get that out. Then once you've got this plastic panel off, uh, you've got two bolts right here that actually uh, hold the winding or the, the reel mechanism into the car. Um, so uh, first take this bottom one out. That's also a T50 Torx. Take that one out and take this little one, I believe that's an eight millimeter out, and then that piece will just come out all together. Um, right here, you've got a little harness, a little plug that plugs into the side uh, of that tensioning device. And um, just for your reference, you can actually see right here, that's the side crash sensor. And uh, that's what would tell the car to deploy side airbags if it was in a, a side impact crash. Anyway, so you've got the lowest mount right here, then you've got two for the real mechanism, and then up in here, you have one more bolt that actually holds uh, the swivel attachment in. And to get that out, you actually have to take this little piece off, just a screwdriver or something will pop that off and that will come out. And you've got one more T50 Torx right there uh, that you'll take out. And then that's really all there is to it. So it's not as challenging as I actually originally thought it might be. This piece does not have to come out, even though I did take it out, so I've put it back. Uh, but this doesn't have to come out in order for you to get the seat belt out. Uh, but that's really all there is to it. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the passenger side air, uh, seat belt out now. And uh, I'll check in with you when I get done. There's the passenger one out as well. So the uh, passenger one is basically the same as the driver with one exception. The lowest mount on the passenger one is actually on the driver's or on the passenger seat. I'm not sure why it's different because the driver one was down here uh, mounted at the bottom of the floor, but that is a 13 millimeter bolt, uh, not a Torx, and it comes out pretty easily. The uh, the one thing I did, I don't know if this is necessary, but I went ahead and marked mine with D for driver and P for passenger. I think they're the same, but just uh, to be safe, I want to put them back in exactly the same position they came out of the car, so I went ahead and marked them. This seatbelt was working when I first got the car as well, but as you can hear, it's rattling and it is now locked. So. 
Both of these seat belts definitely locked, which is what you would expect uh, in this kind of an impact with dual airbags blowing. So I'm gonna send these off to myairbags.com along with my SRS module and uh, they will get everything, they'll get these rebuilt, they'll get my SRS module reset and then I'll be able to install them back in the car and that should take care of all of my uh, airbag warning lights. All right, once you've got the seat belts and the SRS module out of the car, you wanna get them packed up to send to my airbags. So what I've done is I've just gotten a spare box I had and some bubble wrap that was uh, left over from when I received some parts. And I've carefully wrapped all the parts up and put them down in the box. I went ahead and put the seat belts on the outside and sandwiched the SRS module in the middle. The SRS module is a computer part. Uh, so you want to take especially good care of that. So I went ahead and sandwiched it in there with extra bubble wrap so it is good and protected. Then I'm going to go ahead and throw in my paperwork that has my name, my return address, and my phone number on it. And then I'm going to take just a little bit more uh, leftover bubble wrap that I have and I'm going to fill the box up the rest of the way with that. I have a little bit more that I'll put in there and then seal it up and it's ready to ship to my airbags. All right, now that I've got the parts all packed up, I'm gonna get them shipped off to my airbags. Once they receive them, they've got a 24 hour turnaround time and then they'll ship them right back to me. So I'll be back in business in no time. As I said earlier, myairbags.com is actually sponsoring this video. A huge shout out and thanks to them for that. I know that many of my viewers are working on rebuild projects of your own or you're considering doing so, so My Airbags wants to help you out. Enter the code CROSSROADS10 at checkout and you'll receive 10% off any services that you use from MyAirbags.com. Now that I have my seat belts and my SRS module on the way to Airbags.com, I can get back to work putting the rest of this car back together so we can get it on the road as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching Crossroads Rebuild. I appreciate every one of you. If you haven't subscribed already, why don't you go ahead and take care of that now and then hit the bell notification icon so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.